Tuesday. RawMikeRichards.com broadcasting live from the DKI Studios in downtown Toronto, 234 King Street East, the Pacific Junction Hotel. Coming up today, the Raptors lose. Kyle gets tossed. And I looked at that ejection compared to what happened with the the Rockets and the Clippers, which was like West Side Story. I think sometimes guys just got to control themselves. Uh, that did not happen last night between the Clips and I guess Chris Paul coming back with the Rockets. And it got ugly and really cheap, like really stupid stuff. You know those uh, tights that the guys wear on their legs? You know, the in the day it would be spandex. If you, if you were a heavy metal band, you'd wear these pants. But the, uh, Blake Griffin had his torn right off from a guy. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's kind of an embarrassing game, to be honest. I, I am sure there's going to be something in terms of, you know, the Rockets breaking into the uh, Clippers dressing room looking for someone. Are you serious? Makes uh, Tortorella look uh, reserved. Leafs get back at it at home to play the St. Louis Blues. So I am donning. I know, I, uh, Russell, you got to be so excited what I'm doing now. Excited. Uh, never have seen you wear anything Leafs before, yeah, so no, I've, it's a first. Yeah, this is uh, very exciting for everyone, I think. Will it be exciting for the Leafs? We'll find out. Also, wrestling of the kind of variety that you don't see often anymore because I suppose saying the word midget is bad. No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm going to show you some very disturbing uh, luchador. So the wrestling... The luchadores in uh, Mexico, you know, the one with like uh, Nacho Libre and the masks and so on. Uh, they do something I'm pretty sure that would be some sort of uh, human rights <laughs> violation if uh, it was done in North America because everyone's very sensitive these days. Very sensitive. Except if you're watching apparently TLC, originally brought on as the Learning Channel. Now it is the Circus Freak Channel. If there is an abnormality, they make a show out of it. And they do it by letting you know in the title of the show what it's going to be. You know, real hard-hitting journalist uh, journalism like, uh, uh, I didn't know I was pregnant. Have you seen that? I have not. So you're so <clears throat> obese that you don't even realize that that's not just the Twinkies talking. Mm. That's, a, that's a fetus. That's a human being. That's a human being in there. Interesting. A surprise pregnancy. Seriously? Then you have my giant life. You have uh, my what four hundred pound life? Is that that's one? Yeah, uh, these these lives not good. Last night I saw two of them. One of them said my baby's head won't stop growing, and another one was called my legs won't stop growing. What? Now I'm not saying you don't learn uh, these things. Look, I saw some of the giant girls. I got you know uh, there was a couple in there I kind of liked. One got a basketball scho- scholarship, but I think like UConn. I was like. I'm not feeling that bad for her. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not, not that bad. The Learning Channel. Yeah. Learn, like, is there a channel? Learn nothing. Is there a channel you watch, a non-sports channel, where you go, okay, I really shouldn't be watching this much of that channel, uh, or, or it's just a channel you dig that's non-sports? Because there is one for me, the American Heroes Channel. CP24. CP24. Wow, Dave, that's very, it's very avant-garde. <laughs> I watch the American Heroes Channel because it's got a million things on like Nazis and Hitler. There's, I, I, I can't tell. And I then, know what you're talking about, too, yeah. because I've seen Hitler's last uh, army oh, or this yes. army, Hitler's last boat or Hitler's oh, yeah. last, everything Hitler. Yeah. Uh, Hitler's zombie army. Hitler and zombie armies? Yeah, click. Click <laughs> and record. My wife's like, what are you doing? Why are you watching all this stuff? Then there's the Nazi hunters. Yeah. So Simon Wiesenthal chasing these guys all over, like, South America and then getting them, the stuff they did, they did back in the 70s. Like, these were some of these people who caught these uh, these uh, these Nazis. These, they were like normal. They just had like normal jobs beforehand, and they decided we're going to get these guys and bring them back on trial. So when they tried to kidnap guys, it was like Russell, get his legs. <laughs> They're like, well, I don't, I don't know, what to, I don't want to. And that's how they did it. Like it, the courage it took to do that is absolutely fascinating. AHC, or it's on gangsters, mobsters, mm-hmm. a lot of hits on there, and I'm not talking hockey hits. No, no, there's just a lot of disturbing things, and uh, God, I can't stop watching it. AHC is mine. Or anything Gordon Ramsay does. Anything Gordon Ramsay does, I'm watching that too. I'm trying to think. I, I, I mean, 
I'm not joking. Sometimes I, I you put on CP24 because you want to check out weather quickly and what the forecast looks like, and then it stays on, and then you hear the same story twice, oh, yeah. three times. Four. I'm like, garbage. Click, click, click. So, it, you know, so. Oh, they had a funny uh, sort of a retraction. I think it was City TV. Uh, the girl that said she had her, whatever you call the the face thing. Uh, sure. The, the, the Islamic Cuts, girl. Yeah. yeah. And then someone, someone cut it. Uh, made up. The story was made up. Oh, I heard about that. So that's, then, that's not good for then, anybody. No, it's not good for anybody. But then, yeah. then City went on and said, "Well, blah blah blah," and it's like, no, you put the story on because it would be uh, the equivalent of, of clickbait, and it turned out that uh, you were wrong. Yeah. And they put the blame somewhere else. No, you put it on there. Just, just say what it is. You wanted that publicity of of breaking this story, and uh, the little girl made it up, yeah. which is really bad. Yeah, uh, that's horrific. Uh, considering the the climate of of how our world is right now. I was, um, and I didn't know a ton about it because I'll be honest, I see stories like that. Um, there are so many of them. There's so much, uh, you know, Trump hate out there or, or what Justin Trudeau isn't doing. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, that's why I probably don't watch a lot of those channels uh, or, or CNN. There was a time where I did use, I used to watch CNN, headline news. And now it's all one thing. Yeah. And I just can't watch it. Therefore, into the fantasy of Netflix. Uh, you haven't seen Ozark yet, have you? Have you seen no, Ozark? No, you, I haven't. Okay, it is on. You've seen it, right, Russell? You haven't seen Ozark? I thought you have. No, my uh, my Netflix has been very spotty with the Wi-Fi at my building, so it's been hard for me to watch Netflix series this year. Because if, if you haven't seen Ozark, you want to be pulled in and then have to blow all kinds of time uh, binge watching because i don't believe season two's out yet it's it's uh, jason bateman yes and i will oh, give i've you, heard i've heard nothing but yeah, good things and i'll about give you it. no premise because it will ruin it you just have to watch it and it's a it's a jaw dropper it's it is an outstanding one just like i, I was stranger things <laughs> stranger things was, was pretty good so uh, that i've watched i'm more of a justine bateman than a jason bateman though so. i like justine yeah. bateman yeah family tides yeah so really michael j fox nothing no he was more of a Tina Yothers. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. He said, oh, you mean the little cutesy girl? Uh, that's not how I describe it, but sure. <laughs> and then she went and her hair got all dark and she went all goth. Is that, I could see that happen. That did not help. Ugh. That did not help the look. Uh, speaking of the look, last night for the Raptor, well, actually yesterday afternoon, it yes. was uh, Martin Luther King Day. They played in Philadelphia. Uh, Kyle comes back because uh, huh, that's his hometown. He, he wanted to play, felt he was okay to play. But, um, you know, this is a team in Philadelphia that obviously because of <laughs> of having the top draft picks for what? Ooh, the last 17 years. Yeah, it, it's, like, it's like the Oilers to a degree Basically. of the NBA where you get all the top line and, and – uh, uh, Simmons is actually uh, he's uh, playing this year. Yeah, Ben, not Steve. Yeah, yeah. This that would be boy. The fast break would look a little different, uh, I think, with that. And there was a little mix up, uh, I guess, if you want to call it that way. It, it started earlier on because Kyle didn't like the fact that at some point I think uh, Ben was was reaching for a ball, kind of bumped him like he he was behind Kyle, didn't see him, bumps him. That starts something, and then they just ha start having words, right? No, no, no they're not throwing, uh, you know, knuckles or anything like that. They, there was no enough, and all of a sudden the whistle goes, and they're both chucked. Now, was it the end of the game towards? So maybe no one cares. But I just think there are times where I've seen Kyle thrown out, and it's it's something I'm like, is he really good at swearing? Is he like the guy that's so good with language? It's like that Seinfeld episode where the guy said like one insult. When he breaks up with a girl, you ever see that episode? I have not. He says one thing, and when it bothers people so Ooh. much they got to kill him afterwards. So Elaine gets he breaks up, she breaks up with him. He goes, "Okay, fine, yeah, whatever." You have a really big head. What? Yeah, and that was it. Big head. She goes, "Oh, that's all you got." Doesn't bother me. Then all these things start to happen that would insinuate a big head that she has a big head. So then she wants to kill him like all the other exes. I don't know what Kyle does. But apparently it must be very upsetting because he gets chucked without, I don't think, doing all that much. Here it is yesterday, a property of the National Basketball Association and their broadband uh, properties, and courtesy of TSN. It's a long right for three. It's been absolutely terrific for them. So now it's a four-point game. So watch. Not out of it yet. Bent down to get the ball. Kyle gets bumped. 
that's nothing, right? Multiple opportunities. And Saric makes the second, so it's a six-point game. And now some conversations, and Ben Simmons and Kyle Lowry, and more conversation. And Robert Covington, and there's Simmons and Kyle Lowry. Double technicals. And that's it. And they've been ejected. They go home. You couldn't wait to get off the court. <laughs> Just seriously. seriously. It was like, I'm a little tired. I'm going to say something. Hey, Ben, you know your mom? You know that thing I said about your mom? What? Big head. What? Whoa! <laughs> boom, boom, that's boom. That's it. Gee. Or as they said, in semi-pro, which kills me. Hmm. Oh, I think he might have said S my C. Yeah, he said S my C. <laughs> <laughs> or when, when when he turns around and goes, I'll murder your whole family. Oh, okay, that's it. I'll murder your whole If you haven't seen it, that's hilarious. To me, that's hilarious. Uh, what wasn't hilarious? Yesterday, uh, taking a look at the, I said the Clippers and the Rockets. It was one thing after another, and it just got weird. To the point where after the game, the, the Rockets go into the Clippers' dressing room? Secret passage, too. What? You know, even Tortorella's saying uh, the whole team. No, the whole team, that's a little too much. Here's just some uh, action, if you want to call it from this game. Of course, so CP3 goes back, so there's a little uh, uh, emotion. Uh, you've got uh, Blake uh, Griffin out there. They get a little... Uh, uh, I guess heated to a degree, but watch the how cheap this stuff. This looks like some high school kids that you just can't control, and they keep going to the basis level. Once again, property of the National Basketball Association, and then their broadband properties. Here is West Side Story, as performed by Houston and the LA Clippers. Oh, there's a little shot that Paul as the two go down the lane again. So that's just a little bump, no big deal. Friendly or not, third on. But it's what happens as a re now. Watch, watch the pants. Look at <laughs> what is coming out of Blake's. I think he, he tore his tights. And Ariza holding on for dear life. <laughs> okay, the then ball. watch this. Throws it off of Gordon, trying to get it out of bounds, and the players yeah. don't like that from the Rockets side. He's throwing. The, there is a little bit of look at that. Perhaps. Gordon did right. And Trevor's having words over in the bench right now. Again. Yeah. And then. Oh, they just tossed. They and Trevor, just tossed Griffin. Well, uh, Reza better not go out the tunnel that way because that's where the Clippers bench is. I'm not quite. Oh, I think he was having words with Austin Rivers. And that's Reza. who they were looking for apparently after the game. Austin Rivers. When do these two teams play again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I want to be there. This is going to be must-see TV. Well, and then, as we know, it carried right into the dressing room. So I can't imagine that there's not going to be fines for that. But, there's, you know, I don't mind aggressive basketball. It's it's what the NBA – and that's the real huge difference. Not that college ball doesn't have that, you know, a level of contact. But it's nothing like that. It's nothing like – and, again, I'm not going back necessarily to how the Pistons used to play or the – or the, uh, you know, Hack-A-Shack era or, or, mm -hmm. or, you know, Charles Barkley. But, you know, for the most part, you, it's a man's game. It's very physical. But last night, ripping shorts, throwing guys, balls the back of guys' heads and stuff like that, That's that does not help the NBA. And I can't imagine there's not going to be, not necessarily the hand of God, but let's uh, let's see some. Uh, there's going to be some money yeah. distributed as far as uh, suspensions are concerned. Uh, I, I don't think anybody gets, like, games, but money will be uh, put on fines, I guess. Not suspension, but fines. Yeah. Now, of course, it doesn't get as crazy as uh, what I'm about to show you. Uh-oh. I don't know. Now, you, you know, you've gone back. So WWF is is that the oldest of the uh, the Super League the Super because you know obviously it goes way back to the fifties and sixties but I'm yeah. talking about well it used to be a lot of people don't know this but it used to be three W's and an F and then they reduced that to two W's and an F I, see, and then, I didn't know that yeah and then they reduced it to uh, they didn't want to get into that lawsuit with the wild worldwide that's right wildlife yes, federation they, yes. so they changed it to E. And here we are today. So that's the reason the change was because yeah. of the WWF, uh, the World Wildlife Federation? Federation, yeah. Or so foundation, rather? Whatever it's called, yeah. yeah. You see those commercials, or, you know, those cute bears walking Oh, you used to make me laugh. Save I said, bears are, these bears gonna, are the bears going to fight the chipmunks? <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> Why is the WF interested in this? Chair shot on the yeah, bear. It's yeah. like, no! Well, here comes a seagull. <laughs> <laughs> I... Uh, know that when they used to travel when they called it wrestling yes they would come to to your hometown and they, they was those are the traveling guys back when the circus the i'll tell you so they they like haystack calhoun haystack calhoun came to my town it was all part of like w what was the, uh maple leaf gardens indoor wrestling yes which was <clears throat> big sweet daddy seeky yeah you know the flying dutchman all these names but of course that meant midget wrestling Midget wrestling very popular was huge. Yes, very popular. I'm sure it wasn't great when they, you know, from our perspective in 2018, where people are very sensitive as children are looking. At, and they called it midget yeah. wrestling too. Oh, no, we're no, not just we're no. not saying uh, you know to be inappropriate or anything like no, that. Because people would be going, look. Yeah, I, it's it's what it, <laughs> they called it at that time, which obviously would not uh, exist in today's. No, it it basically goes back to the basis of entertainment that say like. Caligula during the Roman times, where he would make people with certain uh, physical traits fight each other. Of course, it always ended very badly, and he was going to probably throw everyone into a pit of lines anyway. <laughs> but that's why people get uncomfortable. But this thing is not that old, and I think, what do they call it, uh, Russell? This is extreme? Yeah. I don't know how extreme midget wrestling is supposed to be, but courtesy of extreme wrestling, how extreme or extremely drunk do you have to be to find this interesting. This is crazy, it's okay. Yeah, right. Oh, oh. oh damn. Oh my goodness. Oh. Look at look at this. By the way, in a tent. <laughs> oh no way. No way. Watch what's gonna happen. Oh my goodness, he's not gonna try it, is he? Oh he's, he's trying to get some lift and he can't. Oh, Oh my! Oh my! And they're both out. Here comes the official. He's uh, who does he count out? <laughs> Isn't that nice? Guys screaming, he's dead. Well, there you go. 2000, uh, 2018. That's uh, that's what you. Now, if you thought that was bad, <laughs> and we talk about human rights, well. I don't know about the luchadores, uh, the luchadores, the uh, the Mexican fighting. You know, with the masks. This is a uh, very it's extremely popular, Dave. Like just massively popular. Those masks are still popular. You go to any any Mexican resort town and you could buy. A, oh yeah. I got a couple. Of them. And a couple of them, from what I understand, actually have uh, NHL logos. Yeah, is that correct? That's right. I got a I got a New York Jets one, nice green <laughs> one, and. Uh, don't really wear it too often because it kind of scares the kids, but uh, yeah, I still have it in the <laughs> yeah, basement, it though. It is a little, uh, I'm going to rob your house look. Yeah, like it, it, really it, does. it is, it is. I can tell you what mask, if you want to buy one or a costume, don't get the monkey one. No. Don't get the monkey one, and here's the reason why. So courtesy of something, Deportes, uh, whatever it is, all wrestling all the time, uh, especially if you're a midget, stay away from the monkey costume. Oh, oh no. Oh no, don't, don't do it. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. That was outstanding. Now, I'd pay. Oh, here it comes again. A slow motion. Look out. Oh. <laughs> bad, bad memories for you, uh, Russell. <laughs> that, that was... The guy's supposed to catch him though in those situations. I think. Oh, he's still he's still down. Oh. That's a pretty big bomb. Kicking a midget in a monkey costume. A drop kick. You know what that says to me? Mm. I'm going to the next show. <laughs> Yes, that, my friends, is entertainment. Uh, speaking of uh, entertainment. Do, do, do you want to hear a, 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 a little people story of recency? Yeah, I do. <clears throat> a certain NHLer that I know, oh. former NHLer I oh, know, okay. went to Vegas last year. And not a word of a lie, because this is, this is illegal, but they have it in certain parts of Las Vegas. You can actually go in Las Vegas... And it's called, and this is their words, not mine, 
throwing a midget. <laughs> oh, so midget tossing. So midget tossing. Midget tossing. So that basically, was, yeah. basically, you pay your money. I forget what he said it was. I think it's twenty dollars, <laughs> and you actually could heave a midget into a into a an area that's obviously padded, and it, it you know it's it's almost like a, a puffy tent that the kids like to jump on and stuff like that. But they actually have it in Vegas, and occasionally it gets shut down because they obviously don't want this happening. But it <laughs> pops up somewhere else, and everybody goes to it, and the owner makes a lot of money off of it, and it gets split different ways, so people make financial uh, gains on it. And um, yeah, uh, true story from 2017. Boy, that's got to be a tough way to make a living. <laughs> Getting like, thrown. hey, Jimmy, where are you going to? Well, let me think I'm going to work. I got, work? got my elbow yeah. pads on. How do you think work's, oh, uh, you think work's going to be tonight? Well, same with those. A bunch of drunk guys come in, they throw me in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically it. That's the old salt grind. And he, uh, I mean, uh, well, I and, mean and he says there's, there's sometimes lineups <laughs> to, actually, to actually wait for your chance to. Well, and here's, I mean, you can do whatever you want in Vegas. Uh, I didn't realize that's still on, because I think that happened back in the 80s when that when that, that sort of popped up. Okay. And, and then, of course, it was really... It was, I've never seen it in person. I've never seen it in person. I never, I saw a, a picture of it that he illegally took, because you're not allowed to take pictures or anything like that. And uh, he told me about it, and I was like, wow. <laughs> so. Oh, uh, work out tonight, Timmy. Shut up, suck. <laughs> 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 like it does every night. I, uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Would you do it, though? Uh, I don't know about that. Oh, I think I'd have to try yeah, it once. You? Oh, I'd have to try it once. <laughs> Russell? I, I would I would watch it because I, I'd, I'd, I'd be Cause alarmed it, that it actually happens. Russell, would you, uh, now be honest. Yeah. Yeah, be honest. Don't lie like you usually yeah, do. Don't. I'd probably try it. Yeah, I think you should. That, I might, I'd love to see you do that. I mean, that's I might, worth all the money in the world to make. I might also volunteer to be thrown in the <laughs> bouncy <laughs> castle, but you, you know what? I think that's because we talk about some of these remotes coming up that we want to do. Yep, Vegas would be outstanding, and that that, that would be filmed. Yeah, I that gonna, has to be filmed. I was gonna say good luck with that, but uh, yeah, I, you know what? Honestly, yeah, we, we one of these I travel websites, uh, Red Tag, send us to Vegas. Yeah, that's right. We should be doing that. Do it. Uh, by the way, I've got the uh, Russell music on. It is uh, a leaf. It is a game night. It is uh, a game night. Is, Finally. Yeah, you know, that layoff too. Uh, good or bad, I happen to think that, you know, they didn't end on the highest of notes. Now the first team back is St. Louis. I don't know. It's, I mean, and again, a lot of finger pointing. You know, look, there's still so much hockey left to go. But halfway through the season, you know, it, 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 people want to care points to points. Points don't really tell any kind of story whatsoever. They, they, they truly don't. So if you have the same points at this point this year as the Maple Leafs team, as you did a year ago, you think the teams now play exactly the same way they did a year apart? The Leafs are better this year than they were last year. Sure they were, yeah. They've had some ups and downs, and they've had some, uh, you know, uh, interesting choices of uh, – where to put guys in the lineup and uh, why some guys play and why some other guys don't play, which I, I, I still don't understand how Roman Polak's on this team, but that's just me. Um, but um, yeah, it's uh, I think I think it's uh, just like any franchise that's kind of building its foundation. It's it's baby sp- uh, baby steps forward, and I think they're in the right direction, and I think they have everything in place. They have to stay healthy now. Well, uh, again, we talked about it yesterday, uh, halfway through the season. By the way, the All-Star game coming up. Is that something you watch anymore? In Tampa Bay? I mean, it's a great location for the players. It's yep. going to be great for the towns like it always is. It's great for the kids. Do you like the All-Star game? I don't. I have to be honest. Even with the 3-on-3, three three, it certainly had. So what was that, Nashville the first year they tried that? They right. did that? Uh, and I and that, that had some intrigue for me. But now the skills competition, cause they, because it's kind of for kids now, where they put on goofy masks or they stand backwards and go, I don't have any time for that at all. Yeah, None. It, I don't. It's, it just. Uh, it's it, kind of worn out. It's welcome. Um, I think the best, the best, uh, I guess, uh, uh, individual, individual, uh, uh, I guess, games they have. I still like the baseball derby. I still like the home run derby. Home run derby is pretty cool. But, it's pretty straight. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, you just hit a home run, right? I, I, you but know, they don't get go- uh, You know what I think, Dave? It 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 takes away the chance to be goofy like even the slam dunk competition that kind of gets out of hand right too. so yeah, it's it's no. kind of jumped the shark a and, little and bit how many times can you actually slam a ball in a, in a basket differently than it's, the last it, yeah. 15 years and i don't blame them but i still think it's a thing of beauty to watch guys like uh, uh judge and bellinger and, yeah. and uh you know 
to sit there and consistently put that ball up like just like rockets. I like it. Yeah, I do too. Uh, so you know what? Uh, because there's nothing really on during that weekend, because they they find a good weekend where you know yeah, the, NFL, the NFL do. is dark as well, because it's in the midway point of the Super Bowl week and so forth. Uh, not much going on. Uh, if there's something I have to do, I'll probably do that before the All Star game. But uh, I I have had it on uh, just to just to take a browse, but not not as a enjoyable watching event where I want to spend two hours of my time doing it. You know, uh, you know. Very often we we show some uh, throwback. <clears throat> now, what's the first one we got there today? Because uh, it's just the people just uh, see these things. So I think it's a it's the Leafs, and is it um, Detroit? I want to say Leafs and the Red Wings, nineteen seventy seven. Okay, nineteen seventy seven. Here's what freaks me out mm. about this. So that's right in the heart of me. You know, I'm playing a lot of hockey. Uh, you know, it's it's. You know, my uncle's the trainer for the team. Like this is a very Leaf centric time for me. But what I kind of forgot in 1977, and for those of you watching, it's who was playing goal for the Red Wings. That kind of freaked me out a little bit. What what year was it? 1977. Whew. And the mask is pretty uh, well known, but not the team that I think a lot of people associate him with. And I guess you're at that age where you kind of forget where guys in the twilight of their career. Was it Gilles Gilbert? No. They start moving around. Ed Mio? Nope. No, I haven't seen this. Video. I was like, I'm just I was like, uh, that, is that really who played goal for the Red Wings in not 1977? Sam, not Sam Saint Laurent. Okay, so now you're gonna now, now you're out of guesses. Because <laughs> as every day, as you know, I throw this out to Liam McGuire, and he always has a great story. Just like yeah. Terry O'Reilly yesterday, I had a great story. That's why I throw it. Liam, you're the best. We love it. So here is 1977, and I guess I got to say, property of the National Hockey League. You got it. I guess they're trying to goon NHL. us all the time. Yeah. Okay. Here you go. It's your property. It's your property. We get it. 1977. Leafs, Red Wings. Look who's playing goal. Boy. Comes back to Boria Salming. Salming shoots it around back in the net. Cleared by Jackman back again. Salming after it. Clearing to Lanny McDonald. He shot it out front to Campbell. He shot it far. Okay, there's a couple of things. Eddie Jockman is playing goal I, I for the Red Wings. I forgot he was yes. part of the Red Wings organization. Now, does anyone notice something interesting about the Leaf units? No names on the back of their jerseys. No names on the back of the jerseys. I don't even remember that. I mean, it was a kid not paying attention probably. Sure. It was a good night uh, for the Leafs early. Here they come. Oh, here they come again. They're at it again. Pat Boutet. Oh, Eddie. Eddie's had his day, I think. <laughs> Eddie was collecting a paycheck. Look at uniforms with no names. Who do they think they are, the Yankees? That's just so strange. Pat Boutet. So, that, so uh, you would have had, jeez, uh, 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 Valaket too would have been almost around that time? Yep. Do you know what his nickname was? It, it's not very flattering to his skating style. I do not know. Snowshoes. Snowshoes. <laughs> no, I I knew Steve Valaket, but not Jack. Bill Derlego, I think, was yep. a little bit after, or, or, or maybe a little after this. Former, but. former Branding Week King, great, yeah. Yeah, wow, I'll tell you, that. that is just so strange. Uh, to see that. Um, you're watching rawmikerichards.com. You're also watching on the dedicated YouTube channel. We appreciate that. You want to go throwback yesterday? Yeah. I know we were talking about it. I have got a hold of Ben Wilson. You did? I got a hold of Ben Wilson. I left I left my name and number with his receptionist. And uh, because he's on holidays, he may not get back to me until next week. But uh, the, the message is in. And now I have to convince Big Ben uh, to join us yeah. on the show, so he's he's based out of Florida, so that's yeah. all I'm going to say. You know how many midgets he could throw around. Uh, I won't ask him <laughs> like that one in each, <laughs> <laughs> one handed each. That'd he, be cool. He, he was the original Zdeno Chara, but yeah. much much tougher. <laughs> yeah. So and not as tall too, but at that time, a monster among men. You know what's always very strange, and Pierre Maguire used to talk about this too. The physical fitness of Zdeno Chara. Yes. Off the charts. You know how hard that is for a guy. What's he six seven? Is Something, he six seven? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, he's six, six nine? nine. Incredible. Because uh, Tyler uh, 
Myers. Myers, is, Winnipeg, yeah. He's six seven. He's six seven, yeah. And does not play an ounce like Chara. Not <laughs> No. <laughs> he plays like he's five ten. Yeah. Good defenseman, uh, moves the puck well, and do you, you know, think really it's really good value? But it's interesting even... to say that because we're at some point, like when he when he goes to, uh, you know, they make that trade. He goes from Buffalo to, uh, to to the Jets. Yeah, great trade for the Jets. Yeah, I think way. it's almost yeah. stealing at that point. Big time, big time. The the people and pieces they picked up and got rid of the disastrous dressing room guy in Evander Kane. It was it was maybe the greatest trade the Jets have made in in, in the history of this organization. The two point Evander Kane. Uh, he gets dealt in the next uh, three weeks. He's yes. got a career left. Uh, I think he does. But like someone would take him with the. With the- look, we're talking about basically off ice issues for the yes, most part, more than on ice issues, and that hasn't changed since he's been in Buffalo. Bingo. It was a little quieter, and then now it's picked up again, especially with what happened last week with uh, with some of his teammates calling him selfish and him injuring Zach Bogosian in practice. And I mean, just the that, stupidity that, of that is is unreal. Sign. Yeah, that's a bad sign. Yeah, it's a it's a really bad sign. I I uh, I I celebrate that that trade like it's an anniversary every single year and I will for the rest of my life. You know what I find that's it, how good that was. To be strange, you know, we talked about you know coming up to the All-Star break, <laughs> they basically played, you know, half their games were out halfway through the season or, yep. or more than halfway. Yeah, a little more than half. It's weird to think about what you're going to do in the offseason because we're right in the middle of this season. But there was a time with the, with the Golden Knights you thought some of the players they had, they're going to be a little disposable. They're going to be guys that aren't going to last. You're going to get some assets just so you can trade them off and get more guys. But what do you what do you do now? Does it change your plan? The fact that you're sitting there in first place in the Pacific, going, "Well, who are we not liking here?" Yeah, I know. or what? And what? Or has the you know the value, sort of the real estate value on some of those players, got up high enough where you think you're going to get something back that's better? than what you ever would have got or thought at the beginning of the season because it's a little confusing for me. It is a little confusing and they have to they have to be very careful because um, they have a number of key pieces right now that are going into unrestricted free agency. So they have to make that decision on okay, are you going <clears> to <throat> have the opportunity that uh, they they might be lost because when you look at a a James Neal, he's unrestricted. When you look at a, a David Perron, he's unrestricted. Uh, on defense, uh, guys like uh, 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 Clayton Stoner, unrestricted. Uh, these are some key players, especially the top ones that I, I mentioned with, uh, with uh, you know, James Neal, who's an all-star this year. Uh, are you going to re-up them? Uh, because if you don't re-up them and if you trade them, you get back some very good value, but then you lessen your team significantly. This isn't something that you should be sitting there going, okay, well, Make the decision. They already uh, like the Derek England uh, resigning. That was that was pretty easy because I don't think the Las Vegas born player whose wife is from Las Vegas and and everything like he wasn't going anywhere anyway. But they re-upped him as well. They have to figure something out with James Neal because James Neal is going to cost you a lot more than what his hit is at uh, at five million dollars right now because James Neal is playing like a like a seven point five. $8.5 million players, so a decision has to be made in there and, and, and probably pretty quick. It's harder to find in this day and age because of, uh, obviously, salary certainty, but I would say that, you know, cap, you know, as I said, the cap issues, to get that superstar, to get the game changer, what the cost of that player is, you, you better have some deep pockets, and maybe it's only if you're one of those teams, like the Leafs did, where you strip everything down, where you get rid of all the money. Because with uh, so John Tavares, yes, he's going to be a free agent. Oh yeah, and so if it's a cap hit, he's going to be what in the is he the six ish range uh, currently? Currently, but what what is the price tag on him, and who do we think is in that running? Because uh, you you better get some something back for him, or if you're if you're uh, what was it Gar- Garth Snow? Yeah. Um, you, well, know, I don't you think... know how bad that's going to look if they don't get like literally riches back for that? Because once he goes, and I know there was a lot of Leaf fans excited thinking that there was a possibility. I just where who what do you do monetarily? I just, I, I just don't see how that's possible. Yeah, it's interesting. He's a, he's at five point five million dollars, and he will more than double that salary. I I would expect him right now uh, to flirt with, if not exceed, what Connor McDavid signed for. That's that's my prediction. Uh, we'll see if he takes some sort of discount if he goes somewhere else. I, I discount, of course, in quotes because there's no such thing as a discount when the guy's making twelve and a half million dollars. But 
Um, it's interesting. The guy has a no trade clause and a no movement clause, and he's in uh, you know the final year of his contract with the New York Islanders. So, it, I mean, it's all money for him. It, yeah, and, and I think it's also about comfort zone too with him because I know uh, talking to people that know his people. He doesn't like the commutes. He doesn't like the practice facilities in one place. They play in Brooklyn for another. Yeah, and, and that's and that's nice that they have this Belmont par- Park thing coming up. But that's still, you know what? If you're if you're digging a, a, a if you're digging a basement for a for an NHL arena right now, that's three years away. You don't you just don't put up a house like an arena or an arena like yeah, a house I yeah, should say. Yeah. So you have to sit there and go. You consider that. And I don't know. Uh, my gut feeling says that the Islanders will throw everything at him. But at the end of it, I don't think he's going to be in New York Island. I I agree with you. I personally think, and I would hate this as a Leafs fan. Oh, please. I think the most logical thing (laughs) is Montreal throws (laughs) the bank at him. They have the cap space for it. They're lacking offense and specifically a number one center. If he makes it to free agency, I would find it very hard to believe that Montreal doesn't just say, Oh, they'll Here, go hard. I think they'll blank, go hard. Here's a blank check. Write your number. We'll sign it. But does, is that something, a place that, I mean, look, you're, it is, as an Anglophone, and as, as expectations have completely dwindled, there's an anger in a place where, you know, the Canadian, the Canadien our religion. Do you really want that on your shoulders if you come in and so he'd immediately I be the would captain, would he not? Yeah. An English speaking yeah, captain? Well, I yeah. don't know. No, I know. The other thing too, and this is very, very outside, but I'm just talking about logistics, lifestyle. Uh, he seems like he doesn't want spotlight, but he does spotlight just because of his talent. The Vegas Golden Knights have a lot oh, wow. of salary cap. Oh, if I'm him. I, I I'm just saying I, I'm just saying at that age. At that lifestyle, to actually be the face of the franchise and to join a team that actually has some promise that you've seen develop, and and and, and let's not forget this: oldest wheeling and dealing doesn't take effect for the Vegas team this year; it takes effect next year. So this this base that they have of young talent is only going to get better. And Tavares to go to this location where the commute to the arena is 20 minutes, the commute to the practice facility is 15 minutes. You're, you're living in obscurity in, in a place that, that doesn't, you know, you don't have to showcase and you don't you don't get stopped at the grocery store or anything like that. I I would not be surprised, just like Russell was mentioning with the Montreal Canadiens, uh, I would not be surprised if the Golden Knights make the offer you can't re- refuse and, and even even like a, a mass of like a, the, the maximum the maximum amount of years and, and the maximum amount of salary to become the 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 richest NHLer. And that would be very cool if they did it in, in 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 Vegas too, and if they did it in the way you just mentioned. I'm just saying. I'm gonna make an offer you can't refuse, John. That's what John, should do. John, we love you, John. <laughs> you know, we should we should get, like I don't is he Newport Sports? I'm trying to think. Is he is he a Mian guy? Uh, is he uh, Pat Morris? Is he? I, uh, I don't know. You know, I I, I would I wouldn't be surprised. I think he is. I think he kind of is. And uh, we do have a good relationship with him. And John uh, Tavares has been on our show before. Uh, and I love to have him on. He's a great kid. He's got a great attitude from a fantastic family. We said, look, can we can we do one rem- one remote from your house in Oakville? Like, we'll just come to your house. We we you know we'll we'll, we'll set it up and, and we'll talk about all the fun things he could do. He'd be great if he went to Vegas. No, I'm just saying. I'm and where's Shane Knighty? Where's the sheriff? Sheriff. Yeah. Well, I'd love to. Yeah. Tracking come that, on. Tracking that guy down has been. I ran tough. into his neighbors, his former neighbors in uh, in Winnipeg. Okay. And they were on the phone. They said, hey, we said we're down here. He said, oh, yeah. That's all I got? <laughs> Seriously, Sheriff? An oh, yeah, that's all I get? Boom. After the time and what we and what we did, and maybe that's why, the Russia thing, right? That's true. Now you're hoping that it goes away. Okay. It will never, never go away. Don't worry, I'm not writing a book about that. Boy, I'll tell you. I have no, I don't even care who the guy is. So who's the, the guy who wrote something on Trump? Uh, Steve Bannon? Yeah. Yeah. Like, whatever. So you sit there and you employ, and then you turn on. I, I just don't like the, the prison bitch uh, tell-all books. I don't care who you are. You know, uh, Steve Williams? Yep. Or the worst. So Tiger makes you a multimillionaire, and now you, you're going you're gonna to talk about him? Like, it's going to be the point where if you were a player of significance, in your contract, are you going to have stuff about the right to sue when it comes to private 
uh, property. Probably not a bad idea. Wouldn't you do it? I would. Yeah, I would too if I was in that kind of room. So if I'm if I'm Austin Matthews or 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 if I'm Connor McDavid, I I would not be afraid to say, okay. By the way, though, anyone connected with the organization, whether it be a team, a manager, you know, the stick boy, if there's anything written about my personal life, I will have the right to sue the organization or whatever that is. Because I, I really don't see any any honor in it. I yeah. totally don't. I don't get it. I don't get that. Uh, and and uh, it's funny. You know, you, you see things like, uh, you know, uh, look, this day and age, the way that the hockey players are, they're very aware. I mean, it's because of this. Mm-hmm. It's because of this. Because in the old days, you know, you could see some stuff. <laughs> now, the guys rarely go out or you're not going to find them. They're going to be together or they're having a private room. You're not getting in. Nope. And I, you know what? To a degree, I don't blame them. I truly don't blame them. You even get that at smaller levels where, where you know, you talk about comedians that don't want to be recorded uh, at uh, comedy clubs because uh, if you say something wrong, have a bad night, whatever it is, then you're you're going to pay for it later, right? So, Well, um, look at this tweet that never went out. What's going on with the internet? Mm. Is, is our a computer over there affected as well? Oh, now it finally went out. Well, that's just, oh boy, I'll tell you. Um, fan, Thanks, Twitter. Fan, fantastic there. I'll, uh, <coughs> I'm just checking this now. This is... Uh, this is one of the interesting uh, aspects of uh, going out of a bar. So that went uh, nowhere, right? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Well, let's review it. Um, Garbage. Wh- why? Garbage. Why, why do you say that? Uh, Don't be like that. Yeah. Tweet activity, oh, 17. <laughs> well, I guess it's retirement time. <laughs> God, I hate those people. Uh, <laughs> here's something else, too. We, we talk about uh, flashbacks. We're always showing, uh, you know, usually fights or, <laughs> you know, moments that the NHL may not be very, very proud of. But the one thing that I think, and I hear hockey people say it all the time, as good as uh, it is in Chicago now, if you've been to the, and I think it's still, it's, it's uh, the United Center still, is it not? Because I know they change the names all the time. It's still the United Center. Yep. But the old Chicago Stadium, which I never had a chance to go to, it's one of the few buildings where they said people run to make sure that they get there in time for the National Anthem. Oh, you can't miss this guy. It was a couple of reasons. Number one, the pipe organ and the guy that would play it, and it was. The pipes were insinuated, so they were put right into the structure of the old Chicago Stadium. So when he pounded on that, you know, that old, beautiful organ sound, it went right through the structure. The building would just shake. It's also the one place where the local fans cheered through the whole thing like it was loud. They absolutely, whether it was a Bulls game or a Blackhawks game, it was the place to be, and I never got a chance to see it. And you're saying, I thought for sure you would have. Yeah. For sure of, you would have. One of the few buildings. I've been to 20, 27 buildings in the NHL, and that's and you not never one got of them. that one. I know. I know. I, I've, there's a chunk of the Midwest where, where I haven't been to Chicago, St. Louis. Um, and not St. Louis either. That no surprises St. No me. No St. Louis. I'd like to go to St. Louis. Scott Trade. Uh, Nashville I haven't been to. Colorado I haven't been to. I think that's basically so right it. there in the Midwest chunk, that yeah. little bit, a little, yeah. bit, a little west with yeah. uh, Colorado. Exactly. If Kansas City had a team, I would not have been there. <laughs> I would not have yeah. been there. Yeah. So, do they think you'll ever get a team in Kansas City? I don't. No, I, I can't see. I it. hope not. I can't see. Yeah, it. I, I, I. I Wasn't the guy it. named Boots behind it? If the guy's nickname is Boots, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> it's not a good. It's not a good call. <laughs> no, Boots Battaglia or something I like that. I remember that. that. Yeah. Hey guys, what do you think? I want an NHL team, Kansas City. No, no, no. What's you, your name? Yeah, it's Boots. Ah. It's uh, it's Enzo, but my friends call me Boots. <laughs> okay, you're out. I can see the team in Houston. Uh, I can see a team in Seattle, like it or yeah, hate it. I know. And uh, eventually, yeah. I, 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 I'm not going to say can. I want to see a team in Quebec City. But uh, I think yeah, the uh, what's and that? I've been to that place too. I've been to both places in Quebec, the Le Colisee and and the um, what's and the, the Videotron Center. Videotron, seriously? Well, it's basically the cable there. You know, oh, it's, it's, I thought. Know, yeah. I thought it was one of those uh, Francais, uh, hey, let's call it <laughs> Le <laughs> Videotron. No, no, it's, it's, Videotron is like saying you have uh, you have Rogers Cable yeah. or you have Bell Cable. It's Videotron. <sighs> Où est la bibliothèque? Yeah, you don't have the library. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get Russell speaking French because he told me he's speaking French. He didn't know. A- Dave was getting the answers before him. <laughs> now, is it because he was in Saint Boniface? <laughs> Maybe, eh? Maybe. Maybe uh, maybe it's Dave's deep down love for Louis Riel. Yeah. It's like, oh, that hanging. No. It still makes me mad. <laughs> it pisses me off. The founder <laughs> of Manitoba, and that's the way you treat him. No, look at us looking. See, just so you know, this is how immature the two people are that that are doing this show. 
there are meters outside, and as you know, we have the Green Pea app. We notice that they never come by nope. before the show's over. No. Nope. So we have got into this routine of, how do you put it? Not paying. Not paying. <laughs> no. So we're sitting here with our phones. It's like, we're on, we're on the line now with. Uh, <laughs> With uh, Queen Elizabeth, and uh, we just <laughs> we're crazy. Well, here. The thing is, yeah. can you hold that on that? You'll... <laughs> yeah, because uh, like, anyone seen it? <clears throat> like, if, if you're watching us, and every once in a while you see this, it's not because we're watching no. people walk by in in their Canada Goose outfits yeah. and their balaclavas and their clubs. It's because we're looking out for meter meets. So, or yeah. me, uh, meter yeah. meets. Yeah, yeah. And that, how's that for a living too? What is your what's your son? Uh, what's Reggie doing now? He's a uh, <clears throat> he's a meter maid. Ha ha, meter maid. That's what you are. You know, oh no, we're uh, what do they call it? Parking authority? No, no, you're a meter no, maid. Meter you're maid. a meter maid. You aren't good in school. You can't get girls. Meter maid or guys or whatever. Now it is. <laughs> whatever I, you like. I don't know yeah. what's going on. <laughs> I don't know nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I bet even the gay world that's not good. <laughs> Sorry, I don't think there's any, wor- any world where being a, a green hornet, they're also called that too. Yeah. So we appreciate green pea, yes. and yet we don't want to pay you. How's that going? I like uh, it. So, Chicago Stadium. Uh, now, you're not going to be able to, depending on your sound system, on, on what you're listening to, but listen to the reaction of the crowd during a national anthem. I got to tell you, it's this awesome. is fantastic. I don't know if this is property. Does the NHL own national anthems now? Maybe. I'm going to say property of the National Hockey League, but it's not. This goes back to the old Chicago Stadium. The way anthems should be embraced because this is a thing of beauty. Oh, Listen to the crowd. Listen to them. singing normal singing not weird not trying to be like a mariah carey classic anthem singing it's a great anthem sorry but it's a great anthem it's deafening the noise There they are. There it is. The big anthem. Great anthem singer. Um, I still prefer Rene Rancor. Though. I love Rene. Rene's still my favorite. We got to get him on the show. I think because he was funny. <clears throat> he was. So remember remember oh. when he answered the phone? He was singing "O Canada." <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was great. Great. Uh, before we go, Mike, I want to show you something. Yeah. Uh, I found this just seconds ago. I want to show you. You the... know, we're ending the show just so we don't have to pay uh, for our parking. Yeah. That, that's that, that. Honestly, this is the sad truth right now. I want to show you uh, the greatest uh, football card I've seen in a while. Uh, celebrating the Eagles going to the conference final. This is Nick, Mike, Mayer, and uh, we'll film it right there. I and little, uh... and, uh, and it uh, looks like that. I think it's uh, he kind of looks like that guy from Flintstones that flies around the Great Kazoo. Great Kazoo, yeah. Nick hey. Mike Meyer. Hey, dum dum. <laughs> yeah. So I thought if you if you're gonna have a card, uh, and if you're gonna be traded in the middle of that season, uh, get yourself a, a full green helmet with no logo on it and uh, the <laughs> one bar like Dave Cutler. Uh, but uh, I had to show that because uh, yeah, Nick Mike Meyer. I've never you, heard of him. Do you remember, for Philadelphia, this would have been back in the 70s, do you remember Mike Michel, which is kind of a weird name if you speak French? Yeah. Mike Mike? Yes. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. Mike Michel. We should ask people. Mike Michel, I've never seen this as a professional. Now, that was just before the Tony Franklin okay. era, and, of course, he kicked with the barefoot. 
which sounded yes. awesome in the wintertime. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Mike Michelle almost whiffed a punt in a game. So he catches the ball, he puts the toss out there, drops it, almost misses the ball. Wow. Legendary Mike Michelle, who will go down as truly one of the worst kickers, and yet still excellence. The only barefoot kicker I remember, because there it was a thing, by the way. It oh, was yeah. uh, I saw Mike, in college a bunch of guys. Yeah, Mike Lansford for the Rams back in the day. Did he do it? Yeah, he did. Yeah. No, nothing on his foot. And it, it's just so weird to like look at it today and go, what? that's what he did in the 80s? Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, or you could go the Dempsey way and kick with a half a foot. You could. Yeah. Um, hey, what's your son Stubby going to do there, Jack? <laughs> well, I think we're going to make him kicker. He's slightly overweight and has a stub <laughs> at the end of his fat legs. <laughs> kicker. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, speaking of things that aren't right, can we just go back one more time to the Mexican wrestling? I know I know it's not right, and I know people are upset, and, uh, and uh, perhaps it's not the entertainment nor lessons that you want to teach your children. No. As the old song says, teach your children well. Well, if you do teach your children, and they happen to be a midget, don't put them in a monkey costume in Mexico. Oh, oh this has got bad written all over it. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Bueno, bueno. Look at the cowbell. That's nice. The poor midget in a monkey costume is unconscious and they're... Oh, what? Ooh. <laughs> How you doing? And he's down. <laughs> he's Jack. Yeah. yeah, he'll be okay. That's uh, yeah. By the way, uh, just so you know, like they like to say in uh, um, in the uh, in the entertainment world, um, where's my uh, no uh, midgets were hurt in the uh, filming of that. Uh, that said, yeah. That's uh, that's okay. what they like to say. But I happen to think that probably. <laughs> Probably he was. What? Oh. We just become best friends. Yep. Oh, we sure did. You want to go do karate in the garage? Yep. Yep, in a monkey costume. It's time. Everybody wrestle over this time. <laughs> yeah, that is, that really is, it's time. I don't think his tag team won either. No. <laughs> I get the impression he was on the losing end of that one. So let me see if I can get this straight. You put me in a monkey costume? He kicked me in the back? And we lose? Yes, Pedro. Here's one dollar. <laughs> Good payday. Oh, it's all kinds of wrong, but I love it. Let's stand the red to rock ball. Like to thank nobody. Nope. Uh, but in particular. No, I like to thank the meter maids for not coming by. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we gotta end the show. Yep. Sorry about that. Tomorrow, we have someone fancy? Yeah, we got the author of uh, the uh, brand new J.P. Bickle book. Uh, Graham McFarlane, I believe his name is, but we'll uh, we'll get you that uh, tomorrow morning. See you tomorrow. Get the Green Pea app. It's worth it. Trust me.